I'll have what she's having. Before we jump into that effect, a little reminder that the My Road Reel contest is on right now. And this time there's $1 million in cash to be won and some great gear too. There are 10 categories with 28 chances to win. Entries are open now and close Wednesday, October 7th. It really is a fantastic opportunity for filmmakers. So jump over to My Road Reel's website for more information, which you can find in the notes below. And now on with the show. We've shown different teleportation effect ideas over the years and even have some that we did but ended up never really showing. It's just an incredibly fun effect that doesn't really have any real written rules on what it needs to look like. You can get really creative and try different looks and styles, also character specific ones such as villains versus good guys. You can go incredibly flashy or just a simple cut. But with the recent release of the Umbrella Academy season two, we thought it'd be fun to base this effect sort of on how they do the effect for the character number five. Now, most of the time when we've done teleportation, we've had locked off shots, then added some digital movement and post. Same with Umbrella Academy, which obviously does make it easier. But this time we wanted to add some physical in-camera movement. It works great to give more energy, but it also sells the effect a lot more for me, gluing it all into the scene in a great way. So for this wide shot, we did the move having Josh run through. Then at the point he would teleport, we held on it for a bit longer, letting him leave the frame. So so that we can use one of these frames as a clean plate. Then when we were shooting the interior, we got two shots, one of Josh making the move, then one without Josh in frame. And I did my best to replicate the movement from that first shot that had Josh in it. But now with our footage shot, we jump into After Effects. And of course, as always, you can do this in any compositing software. After Effects is what we use most often, but it's about the idea, not where the buttons are. So first up here, we're gonna cut our actor's footage at the point that we want the teleporting to be complete, then track the shot. We opted for a 3D camera track since our camera is moving forward, but you can do a 2D track or mocha depending on your shot. Once we have a good track and created an ol and camera, we can choose a still frame from the clean plate and make it a 3D layer. Now line up your clean plate over your actor's plate and change the position, scale, and rotation to match. Now your actor should suddenly appear like this, which if this were a looper, we'd be done. But for the effect we want, it's kind of like walking through an invisible wall, meaning the areas of your actor closest to the camera will appear first. Sometimes the Umbrella Academy will cheat this a little bit where it doesn't really matter what part of the body are closer or further away. But since we have Josh running toward the camera, we're gonna go with the depth option. So duplicate your actor's plate and move it above the clean plate, then trim it to start at the first frame. You want your actor to start beginning to appear and draw a mask around the part of them that is closest to the camera. Feather it, then click the stopwatch on the mask path and change it from add to none for now so we can see the rest of it. Now it's just about keyframing the mask over each frame to expand as your actor gets closer until you have them fully roto. Now add a new mask for each separated area as they appear and once you're done, change all the masks back to add and you should have something that looks like this. We then expanded this layer and continued the roto to last a little bit longer so that we can still have some effects going on behind him like so. Next we're going to right click and pre-compose our actor, give it a name and make sure the move all attributes option is selected and this adjust composition box is checked. Now most of the time in the show, they have this glowing edge around the camera, which does make me think about lighting in general. And although it's not entirely applicable here, for some of the versions of teleporting you could do, some practical lighting could go a long way in selling it. Like in this episode here with the lightsaber, using a practical light within a visual effects shot really does help glue it all together really well. And that is the perfect segue to talk about today's sponsor, Nanlite. Nanlite creates incredible lighting products for filmmakers. And I talked about it before how this entire setup here that you see is pretty much all Nanlite and how much I have been loving this overall. There are Pavo tubes like the two footer, which I have here for my key, the four footer that you see in the background and the one footer that's tucked in the bookcase back there. They're really designed so smart and they're very sturdy. They feel like they will absolutely stand the test of production. And for me, they've been a bit of a lifesaver working in this new normal we're all in. I've been able to rig them wherever I need to thanks to how light they are. And of course they are RGB, so I don't have to try to gel any 
anything. I just flip to whatever color right on the dial. And it's been great to go this minimal, free up space wherever I'm shooting inside of my house. And they're all battery powered, which really does help a ton with that rigging as well, or just flipping it on and tossing it wherever I need a little bit of extra light. Like for that first shot, I just put the light on my kitchen cabinet to light Josh up and combat the windows that were behind him. And of course you can plug these in for consistent power as well, but not having to worry about wires is such a big win most of the time. So definitely check out their link in the notes below for more. And we will be doing a more in-depth look at these bad boys soon as well. But back to that glowy edgy thingy. To do this, we will duplicate the Josh layer and rename the lower one to Josh light. To this layer, we're gonna add a tint effect to make it black and white, then curves and boost the brightness. and then we're gonna add turbulent displacement. Turbulent displacement, turbulent displacement. And this is gonna create some subtle differences to the edges. This makes some parts closer or further away from your actor rather than being all one uniform distance. Now we're gonna add a few masks to remove areas that you don't want this edge to appear and keyframe them. It's best to keep the edge closest to where the actor is emerging and to be fully gone once the teleporting is complete. If we solo the layer, you can see that it isn't just an edge, but it's still an actor as a whole. So use a set matte effect with itself as the matte layer selected, then check invert matte and move the layer above our Josh Roto layer. This now makes it hollow and shows only the edge. Also adding a vector blur with a negative value can increase the width here, which is a, a thing that you can do here. Are you okay? Ah. Uh, do we need to reboot you? No. Yeah. Now we wanna add a glow, but before we do, we're gonna add a solid composite effect with a black color so that the glow works on luminance and not alpha. Then we'll add a glow and tweak the setting to our liking, then duplicate and tweak again to add more of a blooming effect. Finally, we're gonna add a curves effect to boost the blue and lower the red to get a similar color tone as you see in the show, then set the layer to screen. And we should have something like this. Now, since our scene does have Josh in front of those windows, we chose to add a bright curves effect to his roto layer at the beginning and then keyframe it back to normal a few frames in, but this might not be necessary for your shot. It's just a good thing to keep in mind. But now we're gonna add some displacement behind our actor. So we will duplicate our actor roto pre-comp to be used as a display placement map and hide the visibility. Now add an adjustment layer below your actor layer, then use a displacement map effect. Select your actor map layer and change it from source to effects and mass, then boost the displacement values. So far, you probably won't see anything because it's happening directly behind the actor, but if you add a blur on your actor's map layer and increase the blur amount, you should start to see the displacement wrap around the outside. And using curves to boost the alpha channel will make this stronger. So now just play around with the blur, alpha, and displacement settings settings and you can duplicate and change as many values as you need until you're happy with the look. But make sure to keyframe the displacement values to go down to zero once your actor has fully appeared. Another main displacement they use in the show is this bouncing bulge. So add a new adjustment layer below the displacement layer and add a bulge effect. Move the position over the same area your actor appears from and increase the shape scale. At the beginning of your shot, keyframe the height to zero. And if you have a moving shot like ours, keyframe the position to to move with your scene. Now around the frame that your actor begins to appear, lower the height amount and increase the taper radius to make a smoother transition. Highlight the bulge keyframes and press F9 on your keyboard to easy ease them. If your effect goes out of frame like this at a motion tile effect, increase the height and check mirror edges, then move it above the bulge effect. Now move forward a few frames and increase the height, then forward some more frames and decrease. Then forward again and change it back to zero. You should now have something like this. To further match the show, add an adjustment layer above everything and mask it to the area of your actor and boost the feathering a lot. Add a curves effect and raise the brightness, blue channel and lower the red. Then add a glow and change the setting until it's hazy with a wide spread. Keyframe the opacity of this layer from zero to 100, then back to zero over the duration of the teleport. And that's it, Josh has teleported indoors. But outside, we did basically the same thing with one big difference and that is how we removed Josh. For this one, I'm gonna contradict myself a bit with what I said about any software before, since this one is specific to After Effects and that is using Content Aware Fill, which I don't think we've talked about on the show before, but it is demon magic. Black magic. 
At first, we tried to remove this like we did with the inside shot using the clean plate when Josh moved through, but it just didn't work. So I gave content aware Phil a shot and it's a very simple process. You just create a mask around the subject that you're trying to remove and then key the mask to follow that subject throughout the shot. After that, change your mask mode to subtract. I set my work area to just be the selection I wanted to fill, then popped open the content aware fill tab. I'll put alpha expansion to three, fill method to object and the range to that work area. And that's it. I hit generate fill and After Effects sells its soul to the devil to magically remove Josh from the shot. And I was honestly shocked at how well this worked. Now granted, I have tried content aware fill on other shots where it just didn't work at all like this inside shot of Josh, but for the right shot, this thing really is incredible. But now with our shot nice and clean, we added our fancy pants effects and... Again, there are a ridiculous number of looks that you could go with when teleporting. We made these here while messing around with our pre-made assets from our Extinction Sci-Fi and Magic Pack to get a bunch of different styles quickly by just dropping them on into the comp and setting them to screen. Then we just played around with scale, position, and rotation and used similar displacement and glows that we did to finish off the effects we showed here and we had all these different looks. So if you're interested in grabbing some assets like this to get all these different kinds of looks, we've made them 40% off until September 24th, just for those of you watching the episode. So just use the code FRTeleport at checkout and you can get that pack for 40% off. But that's it. If you do end up trying a teleport effect, shoot it over our way to our social channels. Links to all that below. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.